I was walking along Times Square the other day, and I saw this little book for sale. It's called The Art of Kissing. And since I'm interested in the arts, one fellow asked a girl, do you believe in free love? She said, did I ever send you a bill? <laughs> but love is a funny thing, isn't it? A fellow bites a girl's neck because she has beautiful legs. That peculiar? Now, let's, let's take a look at some of the chapters in this book on the art of kissing. You wouldn't believe it, but here they are. Here are the chapter, the chapter headings. Listen, different kinds of kisses, why people kiss, preparing for the kiss. You go home, take a bath, <laughs> a little DDT. <laughs> preparing for the kiss, how to approach a girl, how to kiss girls with different sizes of mouths. <laughs> That's so you don't waste any space, you know. <laughs> then they enumerate, then they enumerate the different kinds of kisses here. One is called the French soul kiss, the vacuum kiss <laughs> by Hoover. There's a little kiss in here which is called the electric kiss. It says if you get tired of the ordinary method of kissing, do this. Rub your feet across the carpet. Well, wait till I get to it, will you? It says rub your feet across the carpet, bring your lips together, shut the lights and let the sparks fly. <laughs> And if that doesn't give you enough of a kick, the book suggests that you get a two-volt battery. Can you imagine the tender moment when the girl says, Herman, kiss me. He says, wait till I connect my juice. Now, you know, it's a, it would amaze you if you knew how many people feel that if they have any disturbance in sex, they can take a, a tablet, a pill, or eat oysters, or drink malted milks, and all these things will affect their sex life. Ladies and gentlemen, please, you will understand so many of the disturbances of sex life, the failures, the difficulties, the, the suffering, if you will understand one basic thing in the psychology of sex. Let's see if I can dramatize it for you mechanically right now. Will you picture, please, in the brain, a little ball? Now, the eye sees an erotic image, something exciting. Now, the little ball starts to roll. It rolls down your spine, to the center in your spine where your belt would be. That's the sex center. But don't rub it, it won't help. <laughs> now that little ball must roll down, hit that spot, and then all the plugs are pulled out and the body becomes sexually active and alive. But, 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 and now you will understand all the diseases of the sex life, psychological diseases, if you will understand this one important thing. That little ball doesn't roll down so easily with most people because it meets hurdles. And what are those hurdles? What are those stone walls that prevent the little ball from rolling down? Guilt, shame, perverted education, fear, fear of pregnancy, fear of disease, fear of being caught, fear, 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 guilt, shame. All these things stop that little ball from rolling down and the person is either frigid or impotent. And then they go for treatment for, the, for injections and for tablets when actually the whole thing lies in their brainwashing, in, their, in the nonsense they've learned, in their lack of education. Now, I hope you realize that there's really no ball here. I've seen people after my talks throwing their head backs and doing this. <laughs> you can get very nervous that way, too. You know, honeymooners don't realize that. They think that a honeymoon is a time to start immediately having a wild sex life and the sex must be perfect. Very, very few honeymooners attain a satisfactory sex adjustment the first few days or the first few weeks or even the first few months. Because, ladies and gentlemen, a person who has had no sex experience cannot suddenly, overnight, find herself adequate satisfying or find sex satisfying. If you keep your car in a garage for about two years, you never use it, and then you go to start it, don't be surprised if it doesn't start right away. And if it doesn't start right away and you pull the choke and everything else, the whole car will go to pieces. And it'll never start. You'll flood the motor and what'll happen? The woman will say, I'm so, my mother was right. My mother was so right, I never should have married her. And the fellow says, I should have tried first. You see, you can't test sex. It is important then to understand that you cannot bring up your children 
to think that sex is evil, dirty, sinful, disgusting. And then suddenly, when they come to the wedding ceremony and say, I do, that overnight, the magic wand will change their attitude. It will not. And that is the way a mother or father creates a frigid daughter in marriage. That is the way a son is created to be impotent and difficult and to find sex a burden by the kind of training you started to give them as an infant, by the kind of teachings, the kind of attitude you started to develop in them as far as their outlook towards sex is concerned. Now, actually, it isn't possible for a boy at 12 or 13 when he's sexually mature to begin to have sexual relationships because biological maturity and economic maturity are not coordinated. He can't get married at 14. And in our society, the only kind of sex that's approved is marital sex. But this, of course, is very hypocritical in the sense that there is a lot of sex going on outside of marriage, whether you wish to face it or not. Therefore, and if it doesn't go on, we are all frustrated in some degree. And of course, sex is a terribly frustrating thing if you don't get satisfaction for it. Think of what you'd feel like if you go without eating for a week or two weeks. You'll eat any hamburger. You'll eat anything. That's why when it comes time to say, I do, when we're asked to say, I do, we say, yes, I do, I do, I do, only let me. <laughs> One woman was congratulating her friend. She says, congratulations, I hear your daughter got married. She says, thank you very much. She says, you're not too happy about it. She says, why should I be happy? Did you see what she married? A oh, big dope. She says, what do you mean? A handsome man, beautiful curly hair, big muscles, beautiful fellow. She says, beautiful, beautiful. But a dope. Came time at the wedding for him to hit the glass with his foot. He hit it so hard, she lost the baby. <laughs> there, are, there are thousands, millions of people who believe that the sex drive in the male is different from the sex drive in the female. Actually, if you were brought up the same without being taught what is right, wrong, evil, or sh shameful, the female and the male sex drive expression excitement, satisfaction is completely equal. A woman is no different from a man in her ability to engage, participate, or enjoy sex. The only differences that are, do exist, exist because of education, or I should say, a perverted education. Now, of course, there is, however, a psychology of sex differences because a woman becomes pregnant, a man does not. And in that one sentence, ladies and gentlemen, you should understand why there is a psychology of sex differences. A man, you see, is free to flit around, while a woman can't flit so easily. She always has some evidence to produce as a result of her flitting. For, her, for him, it's an experience. For her, it's a destiny. No wonder, no wonder uh, one man went to the phone one day and he heard a voice say, hello, hello, is this Maris? He says, yes, this is Maris. Who is this? He says, Maris, this is Sadie. He says, Sadie, Sadie, Sadie. Mit which Sadie am I having the pleasure? He says, Maris, this is the Sadie with whom you already had the pleasure. Oh, he says, that's Sadie, the Sadie I met you at Grossinger's. Oh, what a wonderful sport you are. What a sport. He says, sport, I'm pregnant. If you don't marry me, I'm going to kill myself. He says, that's a good sport. <laughs> You see, he has one attitude, she has another. Actually, the sex drive in human being starts very young. Kinsey says it starts in infancy. However, it becomes important when the person starts expressing it in the way that we understand the expression to come. For example, when does it start act active sex activity? About the age of 12, 13, and it steadily rises until about the age of 35, when it reaches its peak, and then it slowly, by the way, reaches its peak at 35 in a woman, reaches its peak at 19 in a man, and then it starts to decline gradually down to 85. You hear what I said, 85, so don't worry. One, listen, one man, one man of 85, one man of 85, told his doctor that he was going to marry a 20-year-old girl. Doc said, a 20-year-old girl, you're 85 years old, you're going to marry a 20-year-old girl. He's, how are you going to keep her happy? If you marry her, take my advice, take in a young boarder. He met him on the street a few months later. He says, tell me, did you ever marry that girl? He says, certainly. He says, well, what happened? He says, everything's fine. She's pregnant. 
Oh, really? Because I see you took in a young daughter. She says, yes, she's pregnant too. 